Hi there and thank you for joining me. In this video we are taking a quick look at scatter graphs. Thankfully not the most complicated topic in GCSE maths, but we just need to learn a little new vocabulary and also the technique of how to establish the connection between two different pieces of information. We're also going to look at how we use a scatter graph to estimate information. So let's make a start. So before we start looking at any examples, let's just start by figuring out exactly what a scatter graph is designed to tell us. We use a scatter graph when we have two sets of information. What we are trying to do is figure out whether or not these two sets of information are connected. The fancy word that we use for connected is correlation. We are trying to find out whether the two sets of information we have been given are correlated in any way. Let's look at an example and see how this works. So here we have a scatter graph. Let's have a look at the basic information first. Well, the title is telling us that the graph is talking about people taking part in a sponsored walk. Now, I said there were two sets of information. And if you look at the graph, each of the axes gives us a particular set of information. So along the bottom, it is telling us the distance walked on the sponsored walk and up the side it's telling us about the amount that people have raised. So these are our two sets of information, the distance walked, the amount raised. Our job is to decide whether or not there is a connection between these two sets of information. So on the graph itself we have a, a set of crosses and each cross represents a person that's taken part in the sponsored walk. So if we look at any particular cross here. Let's say we take a look at this one here. Here we have a person who walked eight kilometers and raised 20 pounds. So our job is to decide, is there a connection between how far people have walked and the amount of money raised? The way we do this is look at the graph as a general picture to see whether or not we can see a pattern. At first glance, it may look as though it is a completely random set of crosses. But if we take a closer look, we can see that in this area here, there are no crosses at all. So there's nobody on this walk that has walked a relatively short distance and raised a lot of money. Similarly, we have an area here, apart from this one cross here, Nobody has walked a longer distance, but not raised very much money. In fact, the way to do this is to look at it and visually find a pattern. Now, in this case, I would suggest that there is a pattern because most of the crosses are within a shape that looks like that. This is telling us that people in general, the longer they have walked, the more money they have raised because someone here who has only walked three kilometers has raised 15 pounds. Somebody here who has walked 18 kilometers has raised 75 pounds and they are all within this shape here. It is an increasing upward moving shape. The further people have walked, the more they have raised. If I were to try to put a line or a pattern in the other direction, it simply wouldn't fit the crosses. Now we've decided this, what we can say is that because the amount raised goes up as the distance walked goes up, then we say that is a positive correlation. The further people walk, the more they raised. There's a definite positive link. Your job in a question like this is to decide on the correlation. Once we have done that, you may then be asked a further question. This next stage is important. If you have decided on a correlation, in this case, a positive one, and you are going to be asked questions about other walkers, the first thing you do, and this does give you marks in an exam, is you put in something that we call the line of best fit. In other words, if you were to draw a line along the center of the pattern of crosses, where would that line be? 
Now, in this particular case, I would suggest that the line that comes as close to as many of the crosses as possible is a line that's going to go somewhere in the middle here. Now, it's going to be your decision as to exactly where you put the line. You may feel it is more here or a little bit lower than mine. And in fact, that is okay. You're allowed to do that because, of course, you cannot be pinpoint accurate with something like this. So let me put in again my line of best fit. I'm going to say it's about there. I roughly have the same number of crosses either side of the line and it goes up through the center of the pattern that I can see on the graph. Now that you have the line of best fit, a typical question would be to ask you about another walker, a person who's not yet on the grid. And typically they may say, if another person has walked 11 kilometers, estimate how much money they might have raised. So if we do that, 11 kilometers along the bottom here is here. So if we read up 11 kilometers up the line here, we hit the line of best fit there. And this corresponds with 40 pounds. So what we are saying here that an estimate, it cannot possibly be accurate, but an estimate that somebody who has walked 11 kilometers would raise around 40 pounds given the pattern that we have here. And that would be a perfect answer for an exam question. Let's have a look at another scatter graph. This time we're being told it's all about hot drink sales in June. So maybe a cafe selling hot drinks. The two sets of information that we have here are the daily temperature. So someone has recorded the temperature for each day in June and then made a note of how many hot drinks they have sold. Once again, we are trying to establish whether there is a connection, a correlation between the two sets of information. Now in this graph, we have a big space down here. And again, apart from the one exception that we have here, and there will always be little exceptions, it looks as though on the colder days, the actual number of sales were further up the chart. There were more of them. Here, there's a gap which is suggesting that on the warmer days, 20 to 25, the sales of drinks appear to be on the lower side. Therefore, we can look at the pattern and say, yes, there appears to be a correlation here. And that correlation would seem to be that as the temperature gets higher, the number of hot sales go down. So if we were to look at a line of best fit in this particular graph, it's possibly going to be somewhere there. Now, in this graph, two things are moving in the opposite direction. As the daily temperature gets higher, the actual number of hot drinks sold is getting lower. This one we call a negative correlation. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. If you were to be asked for an estimate and somebody said, if you were to have a temperature of five degrees, what would be an estimate of the number of sales? You would look at the five degrees, read up the graph to where it meets the line here and read across. And it would be something like maybe 83, 84 sales. Again, it's an estimation using the information that you have picked up from drawing your own line of best fit. In this final example, I've changed the details of the graph ever so slightly. We are still looking at the daily temperature, but rather than hot drink sales, we are now looking at newspaper sales. So again, someone has recorded the temperature each day and also how many newspapers have been sold. Now you can see from the crosses on this particular graph that they are far more widely spread throughout the graph. There is no concentration of crosses going in any particular direction. Therefore, quite simply, we can say there is no connection between the number of newspapers being sold and the temperature of any given day. Therefore, there is no correlation. A quick summary then. You are given a graph with two sets of information. Your first job is to decide, is there a connection, a correlation between the two sets of information? If you think there is, can you draw a line of best fit 
to show either positive or negative correlation. Don't forget, your line will not be exactly in the same place as someone else's, but as long as you feel you have drawn it through the center of the correlating pattern, you'll be fine. Once you've got your line, you can then use it to make estimates when an exam question asks you for further information. And that's all there is to it. I hope that was OK. Please do subscribe to my channel if you found that at all useful. I have lots of other videos and I do try to bring new ones out on a regular basis. Hopefully I'll be seeing you again. Thank you.